What surprises me is that in the midst of that environment, I grew up to be a very happy child. I was always happy. I was always amiable. I was always, you know, singing. There's no time I won't have a song to sing. In the course of my house chores, I will, I will be singing while going to the stream. You know, I was always happy. I, I, I still cannot understand why in that sort of environment, I will be happy. I love God. I love church. I loved people. I, I was just an easygoing person. And so growing up, a lot of things, you know, many unusual good things were happening to me that were not happening to my siblings. I will always remember my older ones telling me, I want to use my local language. I can afford it for me. So like, like I was a favored, you know, lock. They use the word lock. I did not also know myself why I was always having things to work out for me. But all I know is that I was always happy. And so it's, you know, it's continued like that into my adult life, into my college days, until I got married <clears throat> and life happened. I got into my marriage, a very beautiful marriage. And um, before you know it, a lot of ugly experiences, turbulence, so many things happened, external aggressions, internal aggressions, you know, not having children on time, so many things. So I lost myself. I lost Akan. I lost my peace. I lost my stable life. I had a way of life that was, that was producing a certain result in my life. And I did not know that those were the reasons for my results, the result I was having then. And so when I lost it in between, I, because I did not know, I did, you know, you know when you even have something you don't know that you have, unconscious competence. Because if you're conscious of the competence that you have, if you're conscious of what you have, you will be able to duplicate, you know, the results in every areas of your life and at every point in time that you, you wanted it. So I never knew what I had. So when I lost it, I didn't even know what it was. Fast forward to 2020, 2015, when the Lord led me to a closer relationship with him. I've always loved God. I've always had a relationship, but it wasn't a close relationship. It was just a normal Christian girl, go to church, sing in choir, pray, worship, you know, just love God. But in 2015, God took me to a closer, deeper, intimate relationship with him. And the Lord started teaching me so many things about my life, gave me a lot of experiences, restored the things I lost, my song returned, my peace returned, my happy self. You know, he took time. One of the areas that God really took time to work on me was anger. At some point, I became very touchy. Little things will get at me. People will just, little things that people will say will get at me. I'll get angry. And the Lord kept, you know, talking about it, teaching me how to overcome anger. One of the books that really helped me was a book written by Joyce Mayer, Managing Your Emotions. So it was a combination of the teachings from the scriptures and the Christian books that I read. And by the help of God, I overcame anger and joy. God restored to my, my heart, my life. So during uh, year 2020, when COVID-19 happened, I was a bit idle and I hate idleness. So I got involved in a lot of self-development, 
mind training from 2020 you know, up to 2021, I've been involved in such training. One striking thing that happened was that a lot of things that I learned from those self-development trainings, though some of them were sciences, some of them, I have a coach that mixes sciences and, you know, and scriptures to teach. But I realized that these were things, some of them were things that God had taught me, you know, during, you know, my, in my secret place with him, you know, my intimate relationship with him. So I went back to my notes. So most times after each session, I will go back to my old notes because I have a notes, you know, during my teaching, during my study time, I always keep a notes, you know, whatever the Lord teaches me from the word, I always write them down. And I'll go through, I will do a comparison and I will see that, oh, I have learned this thing. God has taught me this thing. Or maybe I didn't understand it, you know, in, in relation to science. But what this did to me was to show that indeed science confirms that God is real. The things that we see, the things that we read in the scriptures, science confirms them. Science validates God, validates the things that God does. So one of those topics that I was taught was homeostasis. Big grandma, <laughs> big grandma. You know, but I realized that, you know, when I went through the teachings, went through the scriptures and what the Lord talked about, it's just stability. That's just what this homeostasis, this big English, I'm not going to be using it most of the time. I'll just use stability. It's just stability. So um, what are we going to achieve at the end of this study? I, I wrote down some things that we are going to achieve, you know. So I said at the end of this session, we hope to achieve the following, establish and un understand the concept around physiological homeostasis, establish and understand the spiritual homeostasis, establish a link between physiological and spiritual homeostasis, examine stress, Examine stress as a causative factor of instability in our thought, life, and belief system. Establish an understanding that God created us for creativity. We are co-creators with God, and that stability is essential to the core of our being, which is creativity. Examine the fact that that forms and affects our thought, life, and belief system, and we discuss ways to maintain stability and increase creativity. So, what is homeostasis? By definition, as a noun, homeostasis is the human body keeping a constant internal temperature. That's what homeostasis is. As a verb, it is ability or tendency to maintain internal stability in an organism to compensate for environmental changes. So, simply in my layman understanding, homeostasis is a human body internal working that helps to protect it from external aggression. And homeostasis is derived from the Greek word stable. I said this earlier on. The human body is constantly managing complex interactions to keep the body stable. So now, what are the activities around homeostasis? Homeostasis helps to maintain healthy body pressure. If the blood pressure is on the high side, the heart slows down and it is, and if it's on the low side, the heart increases the speed of the pressure to maintain a balance. It also maintains a balance between the body um, glucose level, body temperature, the volume of water and blood oxygen. So now we are finished talking about physiological homeostasis. So let's move on to spiritual homeostasis. So spiritually, homeostasis is the ability of our inner mind to, um, to maintain calmness, peace, and stability in the presence of external aggression like storm, turbulence, turbulent situations, anger, provocation, lack, etc. Our inner heart 
our spirit being, our thought life, our belief system are always swinging on and off balance. Today you think you're stable. Today you think you're happy with God. Today you think you're happy with the things around you. The next moment you're seeing things that challenges your belief in God, challenges, you know, belief in your system, your belief in yourself. So every day we experience chaotic situations, wars within and without, struggles over sin and self, self-doubt, mistakes, and without God, no wonder the songwriter, just as I am, says, say, just as I am, and talks about with many conflicts, many doubts, fightings without, and fears within. We are faced with all these things every day. So, like I said, when I heard these things, I always go back to the scriptures to find out what did the Lord say about this big grammar. If we open to the book of Isaiah 26, verse 3, he said, Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind he stayed on you, because he trusts in you. When we trust in God, when we keep our mind, our thought life focused on God, we experience peace and peace is equivalent to stability. The next Bible version is Isaiah chapter 30 verse 15. The Bible says, by returning to me and resting, you will be saved. Your strength will be in keeping calm and showing trust by returning to God. God is our source. It's like a fish that is being brought out from water to land. That fish cannot survive for too long because the water, it is natural habitat. The same thing happens to us. As God's children, he is our source. We were created from him. We were created in his image. There is no way we can survive in the world today without returning and resting in God. That is where our strength is. That is where our calmness is. The next Bible portion is Isaiah 33 verse 6. It said, he will be the stability of your times, a wealth of salvation, wisdom, and knowledge. God will be the stability of our times. Wealth of salvation. Salvation is deliverance. Deliverance from storms. Wisdom. When you want to talk about creativity, you, you, you need to have wisdom. You need to have knowledge in order to create. Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 30 says, A calm and undisturbed mind and heart are the life and health of the body, but envy, jealousy, and wrath are like rottenness of the bone. John chapter 16, verse 33 says, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Even Jesus experienced it. And he told us that, he made it, you know, point blank, that we will, we will, we will have issues, we will have troubles, but in him we will find peace. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 19, it says, we have hope as an anchor. Our hope in God is an anchor for our souls because it is firm and is secured in the Savior's love. So how do we bring these two together, physiological and spiritual homeostasis? Physiological homeostasis is vital to our physical survival. Anytime your body stops regulating itself, that's when death comes. The same thing happens. We need spiritual homeostasis for our spiritual survival because the core of our being, which is creativity, is tied to stability. You know, I'm seated at my dining table and I'm just looking at my kitchen, I'm looking at my blender. 
this blender came with 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 a manual every manufacturer that manufactures a product it does that to fulfill a need and a purpose and the blender helps me in making my fruit juice blend you know blending things anything blendable so every manufacturer has a purpose for creating any product and that purpose I mean, I mean, fulfills a need. And there's always a manual attached to it. I said this earlier on. That manual contains the do's and don'ts of that product. So it becomes the loss of that product. If you, if you miss out or if you, you know, violate any of the laws, you, I mean, the product cannot give you its best. Its best. In Genesis chapter 2, verse 28, when God created us, he attached a manual in Genesis chapter 2, verse 20. He said, and God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful, multiply, and fill the earth, and subdue it, using all its vast resources in the service of God and man. And I, I use amplified version. You know, usually people only use this when we are talking about um, having children. But God was... Actually, it is it, an all-encompassing thing, not just having children, but being um, fruitful in your creativity. The things we are meant to create things, to be co-creators with, with, with God. That's why it says using all its vast resources, the things that we, we see today and we use today came because of creativity, because of someone else's thoughts. You know, someone created it. So we are co-creators with God. We are to utilize our thought life and our belief system and the available resources to co-create with him. Note also that we can never create when we are on the survival mood. I had to put this in, in, in capital. We can never create when we are on survival mood. So what does it mean <laughs> to be on survival mode? Stress. What are the things that causes stress? So um, anger, worries, anxiety, bitterness, unforgiveness, hatred, envy, wrath. They subject our body to stress. And when the body is being subjected to stress mood, it fights back by producing certain chemicals in a bid to protect the internal body from breaking down. There are lots of stress chemicals, but for the cause, purpose of this seminar, we will only make mention of two of them. They are cortisol and adrenaline. The way this chemical works is to set the body on a fight of flight response. The effect is that your muscle tightens up, you know, when you get angry. We all, we all have experienced it. I have experienced it when you are afraid, when you are anxious, your muscle tightens up your heart rate increases, your blood pressure increases, your mouth becomes dry. In your brain, the effect is that the neuro neurotransmitter and chemical known as catecholamine are released, causing the body to experience a burst of energy that usually will last up to several minutes. This experience narrows your attention. It narrows, the only thing that will be, will be you know, your point of focus is how to survive. Your sense of reasoning, you know, it keeps you, it narrows also your sense of reasoning. You can't reason well. That's when, when you're, that, that's why when you're angry, you say things and when you're calm, you would, if someone tells you that this is what you say, or if you remember the things you said, you become ashamed. Because at that point, your sense of reasoning is very narrow. You are just locked onto the targets of your stress. In summary, stress hormones affect your ability to be creative. How can you, now I, I, I want to use an example. God forbid, as you are seated there, someone walks in with a gun, you know, I want, you know, and you know that this person has come in to shoot. Two things are likely to happen. Is it that you want to stand and fight and snatch the gun from the person's hand, or you want to flee 
And I know that I don't know about you, but for me, I think I'd rather think of taking a flight. So imagine yourself in that condition. What, how, how would you even think of creating anything? All that is paramount to you is to survive, to survive that danger that your body is in. That is what everything about you, your body is programmed at that time to help you survive. So the same thing happens when you are constantly on a survival mood or when you're constantly stressed by default. You're waking up in the morning, you are under stress. In the afternoon, you're under stress. Day, how many, you know, brave people? How many people that are brave? So you 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 don't think of any other thing than to just survive. So when by default, you wake up in the morning, you're under stress. In the afternoon, you're under stress. In the night, you're under stress. My brothers and my sisters, I have been there. You cannot create anything. You're just so concerned about surviving. And do you know what? Our world doesn't even, you know, the, our world is, is always there to even support us to be under stress. Right now, I'm in the UK, but the things I get to hear about Nigeria, even, even me that I'm here, the things that are happening around me, so those things, are all, they will always be there. Even Jesus said, he said, you will always have them. So why do you want to now neglect the core of your being, creativity, and now focus on problems that will not cease? Why? I'm saying this because I went through it. The Lord delivered me. I, I, have, I, can, I can, I have, I, I mean, I can compare both lives. I experienced it on conscious competence. I didn't even know. I, I, didn't, I didn't even know the stability I had as a child was the, responsible for my results. I lost it. And when the Lord restored me and you know, all the trainings I've done, I can tell you that is a most sweet life. So I, scientific studies also reveal certain chemicals that boost creativity, examples and um, endorphins of the to sin, serotonin, dopamine. Note that a positive state of mind have a great impact on productivity and our general well-being. This is why God lays so much emphasis on our thought life and belief system. There are lots, both from the Old Testament and the New Testament. God is always talking about our minds. Proverbs 23, 7, as a man thinking in his heart, so is he. Whatever you think, however you see yourself, you think you're small, you're small. If you think you're ugly, you're ugly. Anything that you think, if you think you're rich, you're rich. Proverbs 4.23 said, guard your heart for out of it flows the issues of life. Very important. Out of this heart. When God says we should guard it, it means that you will always at every point in time experience, you know, this conflict, the good and the bad. So you guard it. How do you guard it? You guard it by... Being conscious, listening to your heart. Know when your heart is drifting and you quickly come back, return. Romans 12, verse 2 talks about transforming our minds with the renew, you know, talks about the renewal of our mind. Philippians chapter 4, verse 18, God listed, you know, all the things that if we must think about them, these are the things you should think about, whatever is true, what you know, whatever is worthy of praise, and all that and all that. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 3 to 6. God clearly made us to understand in the world that we are not fighting against, you know, flesh and blood. We are to pull down strongholds from our thoughts. Our, our, our heart is a battlefield of the, 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 the enemy. The enemy, in fact, before Satan will conquer you, he first of all battles with you. On your heart, your thought life, it defeats you. You look at yourself and you feel that, um, oh no. I am, because of my background, I can't go far. You won't go far. Or because um, there's no money, I can't do this. You will not also, a lot of, you know, a lot of thoughts, fear, fears of the unknown. Sometimes the things you're even afraid of, won't even, but you're still afraid. We are still afraid. So this battle is a daily thing. It's a daily thing. It's a daily thing. You constantly 
fight it. So now what are the sources of thought pattern? Here, I would like to emphasize that when we talk about thought patterns, they are both healthy and unhealthy ones. So I mentioned some of the sources of thought patterns. If you, if you, as, I'm, as I'm listing them, as I'm talking about them, take your mind back to your childhood, where you grew up, your parents, people that you know, were a source of influence to you, could be your uncles, your aunts. You will be able to relate to what I'm talking about. I want to talk about environment. Environment is where you were born, where you were raised as a child into adulthood. You know, when I started, I talked about my upbringing. I talk, talked about my background, you know, growing up in my maternal home. First, I, I would like to say that it was a mixture of good and bad, good and evil. There were some things I remember, they are not so pleasant, but there are some pleasant experiences I can also relate. Some virtues that I learned from that family that built my life. My love for education, number one. My love for education stems from my uncle, my late uncle, Mr. Adam. I remember as a child, he would not let you play. Few minutes or few minutes into play, he's, he's screaming. Okay, not screaming, he's just saying, you know, keep saying, I have been telling you people, the future is for those who study, study, study. So somehow in my thought pattern, he helped build into me my, my mindset to know that, oh, if you actually want to have a good future, then you, you, you just have to love education, you, you need to study. And then also spiritually, I have an aunt She's, um, she was the mother of the late, you know, I mean, um, she's late. She's the mother of the Aquabius. Some of us will know the Aquabius. She was my mom's immediate uh, younger sister. She was a woman of faith. Severally, I have seen her pray for situations that were so bad and then it would change. So I learned faith from her. I learned to love God from her. I also learned from my mother, my late mother, but seeing, you know, I, I still remember going to her house, most time to visit in the morning and she's reading her Bible. I learned how to read the Bible from my aunt, my late aunt. So environment has a way of, has a way of building your thought pattern. My mom was a businesswoman. And a lot of times, she was always selling things and below selling her products below, I mean, below the normal price that others will sell. When we sit, when I sit down with her to calculate the profits and the capital, I, I realized that the, the profit is usually very low. And I also grew up as, as a professional. It's difficult for me to get the right pricing for my, you know, for my services. Sometimes I would tell my friends or I tell my husband how much I've charged a client and they were like, what's wrong with you? For me, this is a thought pattern. You don't need to make too much profit. Just a little is enough. So your environment has a lot, a, a lot of ways of building your thought, thought pattern. And you, you grew up with, you will not even know when you grew up with it. Upbringing is the same thing. Significant experience that ignited an unforgettable emotion. Yeah, I, when I started, I talked about, you know, my father the, growing up to know that my father, you know, had to leave us because I was another girl child. So I, I grew up with a feeling of re, um, rejection, unwanted. So I, real, I saw myself always thinking that I need to go extra mile to get people to love me. I will go extra mile to do things just to get people to love me. On the other side, it's also difficult to believe that someone can love me. So someone will also need to go extra mile to prove that indeed you love me. So these are, you know, significant experience I had. And 
while growing up, I affected my relationship with people. Family beliefs, values, virtues. The family, you know, my, my maternal home where they were family, people of faith, people that love God, people that love church. So whatever foundation I had about God is from there. Education also. Is either education will give you a healthy, create a healthy pattern or an unhealthy pattern. I'm sorry to say this because I have experienced both education in Nigeria and outside Nigeria. Nigerian education will just put you in a thought pattern where you just give back to your lecturer what your lecturer has given to you. <clears throat> they don't encourage you to think, have your own creativity, be able to, you know, just, they don't give you that room. To be to be creative and then you hear a, you know some things you hear i remember I, I studied accounting in the university of Rio. so even before i got to do my bsc i knew i had you know a, a dream of writing in accounting you know we have the peak of approbation i can certification institute of chartered accountants of nigeria so i had planned to write the exam but when i got into school i had a lecturer who was a first class graduate. In fact, it's because he was a first class graduate, he, the school retained him. So most times he will tell us, ah, I can, it's not easy to pass, I can. I have written I can severally and I didn't pass. Is it you people that will now pass? I can is it's um it's just it's just for the West, that Western like the Yorubas is created to you know for them, it's not for us. So if you write, if you're not there from there, you're not never going to pass. So I bought the ideas. The plan that I had, I was going to write immediately after my NYC. I finished NYC 2005, but I did not, you know, attempt to write ICANN until 2008. And that was because the MD of my organization insisted that I write. It was a prerequisite to, you know, promotion or anything. So our education, sometimes in the course of you getting education, you can get healthy thought pattern and unhealthy thought pattern. Religious beliefs, the same thing. Religious beliefs, you know, the faith, what as Adventists, we have very rich teachings around believing in God, trusting God. But I, I, I permit me to say here, I know I'm talking to church people, that growing up in church, I can't remember really getting to embrace that wealth was good. I actually believe that all that there is was just living a normal little life, little, and so that you make heaven, and you know, the rich people is difficult for the rich to, you know. So you when you grow up with this, you know, pattern, it, 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 it affects everything you do, even as an adult, you know. So that's, those are the sources of thought pattern. So lifestyle that aids creativity. So far, we have established how creativity is linked to our inner stability and how our inner stability can be achieved by maintaining the right thought life and belief system. Let us examine some basic things, some basic lifestyle that can help us achieve this balance and stability. One of them is the practice of mindfulness. Mindfulness is just your ability to be here. You are here. You are mindful of your thoughts, you're mindful of yourself, you're mindful of the things that are happening. And unfortunately, in this era of social media, where you just say, okay, let me, you just hear one you know, message um, signal and you want to check one message. Before you know it, you have spent two hours on social. I don't know whether it happens to you, it happens to me. So how can you ever be creative in this kind of environment? So you got to practice it, mindfulness, Take delight, delight yourself in the Lord. Be happy, rejoice in the Lord. The Bible says, and again, I say rejoice. Practice the, the act of gratitude. Always and always. Oh God, I thank you. Even during your day. Oh Father, I thank you for today. Oh Lord, thank you. You're able to achieve one thing in the office. Probably you had a tax and you, you and you were able to achieve it. Oh Father, thank you. Or my new things sometimes maybe i'm just thinking about i'm trying to get my memory back trying to remember something and it's difficult and then i got it I just, oh thank you holy spirit oh thank you worship we are blessed as adventists oh my 
There is a place of quiet rest near to the heart of God. A place where sin cannot molest near to the heart of God. Oh, Jesus, bless Redeemer, sent from the heart of God. Oh, those who went before thee near to the heart of God. Beautiful hymns. How sweet the name of Jesus sounds in a believer's ear. How sweet the name of Jesus sounds in a believer's ear. It suits his sorrows, heals his wounds, and drives away its fears. It makes the wounded spirit whole and comes the troubled breast. Tis manna to the hungry soul and to the weary rest. Jesus, lover of my soul. Jesus, lover of my soul. Let me to thy bow some fly while the billows near me roll. While the tempest still is high, hide me, oh, my Savior, hide till the storms of life is passed safe into the heaven guide. Oh, receive my soul at last. I hear the voice of Jesus say, Come unto me and rest. Lay down thy weary one, lay down thy head upon my breast. I came to Jesus and I found he in my star, my son, and in that light of life I'll walk till traveling days are all beautiful songs. You sing and be in the now. How? You listen to the lyrics. You meditate on it. One of those, you know, they, 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 I heard the voice of Jesus say, I am this world, this was, this dark world's light. Say, look unto me, thy morn shall rise and all thy days be bright. I came to Jesus and I found in him my star and my sun. And in that light of life, I'll walk till traveling days are all. Just Meditating on the lyrics. There are lots of messages on it. I do pray with this very one I'm telling you a lot of times. I would just tell, I said, in him, my star, the star guides. So if I found Jesus as my star, I am sure, I am sure of guidance in the world. He, in him, I, I found my morn, my morn shall rise. Look, he said, look unto me. And thy morning, thy, morning, thy morning shall rise. I found in him my son. If Jesus is your son, son signifies glory. Son signifies visibility. There is no way all over the globe that the son cannot be seen. And I will always tell him because I want, I always speak over myself that I'm a global figure. I pray with it. Jesus is my son. I cannot be hidden. I have high visibility. So, the lyrics, you meditate on them. The, is it worship song? Testimonies. Think about the things God has done for you in the past. Think about the things God has even done for people. The testimonies you hear from people. By the time you sit down and think about this thing, it helps you to, you know, to maintain mindfulness. What about imagination and visualization? God took Abraham and said, 
as far as your eyes can see. Was God just referring to the physical landscape? How long could they physically, how long could Abraham's mind have seen? But God was talking about visualization. I say, as far as your eyes can see, your mind's eyes can see. Even when God told him, say, look at the stars, if you can count them, that's the number of your children. It was not the physical, Abraham wasn't just seeing the physical, but he was imagining the, imagining the stars being men, his children, the children that will come from his loins, not minding, you know, his health condition then. So imagination. And this is what the people of the world, they are using. And we sit down as Christians and we mock at them. We think they are not doing the right thing. Why would the, the scripture say that man, um, the Lord can do exceedingly great more than we can think or imagine? When I, I talked about uh, uh, unconscious competence earlier on, that was one gift I had as a child. The life I am experiencing, I know God has surpassed my expectation. But growing up, I had, a, you know, I had a tough, time would not permit me to say, but people that know me know that I had, a, you know, a tough, difficult background. When I am, when I'm going through those sufferings, I will always see a life that I will have to live. I, I will see, a, a, I imagine a life that I will have to live without having to go through this particular suffering in order to eat. I had imagined a lot of things that, even the jobs I've had, I had imagined them. Even passing my icon, getting qualified, I had imagined my induction day. I, I had imagined the day I was going to do my, my, thanks, my thanksgiving for my induction. I had imagined so many things. So imagination is important if we have to be creative. You know, everything that is created is created twice, once in the mind. I can see some women folk here. You will agree with me that before we cook soup, Anything I want to cook, I will first of all cook it in my mind. I, the preparation, how I want it to come out, starts from my mind. And the second time is when you actually cook it. So we are co-creator. So imagination is key. I watched a documentary on the men that built America. They were men of great imagination. I watched them. They are trying one thing. And um, as they are trying one thing, when it seems, you know, you know like, um, I remember Rockefeller, he was the one that um, discovered oil and they were using oil for, for lanterns. So then they were using lanterns, there was no light. So when Thomas Edison came out with the discovery of light, he sat down and thought about other means of using his oil. Because, I mean, it, with the light lamp, wasn't, the lamp wasn't going to be you know, that necessary. And from his imagination, he was able to discover that you can turn oil, you know, to fuel, to other things. So name them, Rockefeller, Henry Ford, Vanderbilt, Andrew Carnegie, J.P. Morgan, they were men of great imaginations. So also your environment, the environment that you live can aid your creativity. You see, I, I won't stop talking about, you know, unconscious competence. Sometime in 2014 in Abuja, I entered my room. I just had a notch in my spirit that your room is not well arranged. It's not beautiful. You know, sometimes we doubt, oh, is, is it the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit speaks to us. We are God's children. So that was the Holy Spirit telling me things. I didn't know what it's about. I just knew that I had a knowledge that my room needed to be rearranged and made beautiful. So I quickly drove out, bought a beautiful carpet, came back, you know, I didn't have AC in my room, I fixed AC, just changed everything. I look for every day, I look forward to returning to my home. It's, it helped in my creativity when I sit down to worship God, when I sit down to think, you know, I, I always, you know, pray for my room. Why do you think when people go, how do you feel? Okay, let me ask. How do you feel when you get to a hotel? The bed is well, the bed is well made. Everywhere is neat, everywhere is beautiful. You can turn your room, like, you can make your room as simple as 
laying your bed, arranging things around your life, declustering yourself can help your creativity. Your five senses, invest in perfume. It doesn't need to be so expensive. The things you smell, the things that you eat in, the things that you, know, you hear, you know, the things that you touch, all of them, it's your creativity. So another thing, a way of life you can, is to write down your goals, ideas, and your dream life, that life that you, all of us have dream life, all, all of us have dream life. I don't mean, sometimes when we were kids, when we were kids, you know, some of our dreams were so funny. I remember one of my cousins saying that, you know, Ibat, you know, Ibat fish, you know, and that our local fish. She said, oh, when I grow up, I will buy, you know, a neighbor that's in the one that the two that combine, I will sit down and drink Gary. I don't mean those kind of dreams though. What is that dream life that you have? Write it down and be very definite with it. Write down your vision. Even our back says, write the vision and make it plain. Speak about it, think about it, create an emotion around it. Emotions are energy, energy in motion. And energy is power. Energy is what boosts your faith to bring the thing that you want to, to pass. Even our God that created us says, the Bible says that God sees the end from the beginning. So when you're making your goal, assuming you're saying that at the end of December, I'm going to have 100,000. 100,000. I wanted to say 100,000 pounds. Okay, so let me use Naira. And you're going to have 100 million. Ask, your, you know, ask yourself, ask, like, how will I feel? If I have at the end, I see 100 million in my account. That emotion, that joy that you feel, they begin to feel now. Whatever it is, it could be maybe you want to have, a, you know, further your education, have a degree. Create that emotion because that is even how your father, how our father operates. Call it the things that be not as though the way. Let me, let me, let me tell you, watch it. Your conscious mind will argue with you. Your conscious, ah, look at you, is it not you? What do you even have? <laughs> I will even have that kind of thing. A, a poor, poor man or poor, you know. But if you keep saying it, if you keep having, I'm telling you what I have practiced and experienced. And it gets into your subconscious because your subconscious mind does not differentiate between um, reality and imagination. It's just like watching a film. You're just watching a film and somebody dies, you won't know where you start crying. That's your subconscious mind acting, not your conscious mind. So, and this is where faith takes place. When you get to this point, this is where faith takes place and this is where things happen. So, <clears throat> create an experience around your dream life. Sometimes I just, in Abuja, I would just walk to Hilton Hotel, it's the biggest hotel in Abuja. Even in Lagos, I walk to one of the biggest places where you have big people, because I want to be big. I will sit down. I may not have money to eat, but just a bottle of drink. I'm, I watch them. I feel, I feel, I feel, I feel myself among them. So create an experience around your dream life. You know, I have, I have some women, people like Ngozi Okonji, Wela, Obiese, Pesili, that I, 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 I look up to. I want to be like them. One time in one of those ICANN conference, they came to deliver. I rushed myself to take a picture with them. In my house, I have pictures of the two of them. I see them. So then choose the right association. Relate only with people that believe in your dreams, please. Sometimes it is friends, association that kills your dreams. Control your emotions. Don't let anybody be in charge of you. Don't let anybody know that if I, then eh, ah, I'm saying this thing because I know what I've been through, you know? I have people that they know what to say and I'll get angry and they were always doing it and they were always doing it. So don't get yourself to that place where people are in charge of your emotion, like, like matches, they just, they just put matches on, pack them and the fire is on, no. Practice consciousness. Conscious, it means be an observer of your thoughts and not just a participant. Learn to catch your thoughts. Okay, now 
I want us to do an exercise. This is morning. I want all of us to think about what we are going to eat. The meal you like to take when you get home, when you close from work. And I just want two or three people to tell me, um, Pastor Eddie, you be the timer um, for one minute. No, 30 seconds. And then I would just want three people to put on their mic and tell me how the how the thoughts, how the thought, you know, how the experience was. Time begins now. Okay, so it's like nobody wants to talk. Yeah, so somebody, somebody you know, uh, yeah. okay, please talk. I Let the person like, talk. I want to know what was the experience. I would like to encourage yeah. you know, now thinking about it. Yes, I'm thinking, thinking about what you want, you want to yeah. eat. What do you feel at the point you are thinking? Yes, I said, yes, I said my thinking, I my thinking, I think for Asia, for Asia, blended with the and uh, and, and, uh, and uh, all it takes. <laughs> okay, was your mind focused on it throughout for the thirty seconds? Were you able to focus consistently for the thirty seconds? Yes. 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 Oh, you must be a genius. Amen. Some of us will. Amen. Some of us, no, 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 if you are sincere, you will know that your mind wandered. It will go on and on. Yeah. We think about other things will come back. We think about other things will come back. That is naturally how we are. So you practice consciously by becoming. Okay, so you practice by being a, 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 a an observer, not just a participant in your thoughts. Learn to catch your thoughts. Whatever thought, learn to catch your thought. Learn to be conscious of what 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 am I thinking? That person that got you angry and you say, ah, you know, some so when you remember the, the situation, I mean what happened. Anger, hatred wants to catch your thoughts and kill it. All those limiting beliefs, disempowering thoughts. Oh, you cannot achieve this. You are this. You don't have the resources. You are not. Catch it. Learn to catch it. They will always come. Learn to catch it. And then words of affirmation. Oh, I love this. I love this. I have them. And then, um, while well, I'm almost rounding up, while I'm talking about words of affirmation, I'd like to chip in here. An exercise that I wanted to do, I have done it, it has helped me. I don't know whether you have pen and papers, but if you can put it in your head, list the areas of your life that you have been struggling to make to, to have a success, to make progress. If there's any area in your life, it could be your spiritual life, it could be your, your marriage, your love, you know, family love relationship, it could be your career, self-development, your relationship with God, your physical um like exercise, your ability to you know lose weight, list them. And then sit down and think. Growing up as a child, what were the thought pattern that you build around these things? It could be, I mean, it could be in the area of creating wealth. What were the thought patterns? What did they tell you? Did they tell you it was wrong to be wealthy? Look, the world needs us rich. I always say the world around us, the world even, are, they want us to be rich. They need us rich. Your family needs you rich. Your state needs you, the world generally needs you rich. Wealth is not, it's not a sin. Please them. And now, what are those things that you need? Do you need resources? Create what I call an I am, list of I am statements. I am in quotes, you know, God is always saying I am this, I am that. When you say I am, Everything that follows is very powerful. Words are powerful. Our world was created by words. So when you keep speaking this word to yourself, 
Say, I am resourceful. Are you looking for resources? And it looked like, say, I am resourceful. I just want to share a few of my own. I'm resourceful. I am beautiful. I am intelligent. I am loved. Why do I use the word? Because I find it difficult to believe that people love me. So I do tell myself, I am loved. I am lovable. I am loving. I am a global figure. I am highly sought for. I am healed. A lot, of, I, I, I don't want to tell you, I'm just sharing a bit of my own. So you sit down around what you are, the goal that you're trying to achieve. Write your I am statement. And every morning, when you wake up, speak them into your life. When you're about to sleep, speak them into your life. You will speak this, they call it words of affirmation. By the time you speak this morning and night, and your subconscious gets used to it, it takes you to a level of belief. And when you believe, the things happen. I have experienced it. I'm not just saying it. At age 15, I it was discovered medically that there was a, a, I had an abnormality and um, it might affect, not might, it will affect my ability to have children. So I went in for a surgery and the doctor couldn't get it right. So when I grew up, I, even before I got married, visited hospital. When I got married to my husband and I, we were visiting hospital, teaching hospital all about Nigeria. And we kept hearing one thing. There is no expertise to handle this surgery in Nigeria. That was why the first doctor couldn't do it. If you want to get it right, you get, you'd have to do it abroad. So in 2015, my husband and I had the opportunity to travel to US for a general conference. And then after we visited an hospital, the second hospital, we were able to find a doctor who had the expertise for the surgery. There were two surgeries. One could be done in Nigeria with the other one. So we wanted to combine the two. And so the doctor told us the bill, 20,000 US dollars as of 2015. On one part, I was excited because at last I found a doctor that can handle this matter. But on the other part, I was sad because I looked at myself, looked at my husband, what we had. There's no way. Even my family member, there's no way we can raise 20,000 US dollars as of 2015. So I remember us got, getting back to my brother. My, bro my husband has a younger brother in Houston, so we were staying in his house. And then my, my husband went to discuss with the brother. I went inside our room and I wept. I was crying bitterly. My husband walked into the room and made me crying. I was like, why are you crying? I said, ah, see this thing that we have been, you know, looking for blah, blah, blah. And we have seen no money. And he sort of laughed me in a mockery. We said, I'm, I'm now for you. I'm surprised at He said, you with your relationship with God, since I know you, I know how God has been doing things for you. Even me that I'm not as close to God the way you are, I believe God more than you do. So I was challenged by him. So I cleaned my eyes. When he left the room, I cleaned my eyes. I sat down and then I talked with God. That's my father, the way I said, I said, you have heard what my husband said and See, I've cleaned my eyes. So right now I'm reporting. I want to give you back the report, what happened in the hospital. This is how much they say we need. And you know that we don't have this money. So I am leaving it at your feet to provide the money for me. And I was at peace. We got back to, I was on leave at that period. So we got back to um, Abuja. I resumed work. Exactly one week after I resumed work, I was on my desk and I saw a letter. You know, they were just passing a, 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 like a letter, a, a new policy, passing from one desk to another. So it got to my desk. When I read through it, guess what I saw? That my organization, Federal Inland Revenue Service, has a new policy on health assistance, on assistance on health issues. Any staff that has life-threatening issues, they 
decided, they made a policy that they will support the staff free or up until the tune of 5 million. I photocopied it, but I still doubt it because I felt my, my, my case wasn't really a life-threatening one. It wasn't going to kill me. But when I took it home and shared with my husband, he said, ah, anything that won't let you have a happy life, won't let you have children, you know, won't, is life-threatening. And the second, the second surgery, if I did not do it, it probably would have become cancerous in future. Though we did not even know then, but my husband just suggested that you don't know the, you know, the harm. So it's life threatening. go and apply. I didn't want to apply. So I delayed. I delayed up until August. This was around July. The chairman that brought out the policy was removed. So we had a new chairman. So my mind, I'm like, mm. The new chairman may not even follow up, you know, in Niger. But because my husband constantly pressurized me to write the letter, I had to write. I took it to church, prayed with a pastor, and I went and submitted the letter. I submitted the letter in October. Um, towards the uh, month of November, I got a call from my head office. Are you Mrs. Ziwat? I said, yes. Okay, so we've seen your application. Can you ask? The hospital in US to give you your bill to just write a letter stating what your bill when the operation will take place. I called my hospital, I called the doctor, she sent, I submitted. Another week, they called me again. Who will you be going with for the surgery? I said, My husband, can you get a pro forma invoice traveling, you know, traveling um, ticket, like a pro forma invoice? having the, the name your the names of you i mean your name and your husband's name i got it i sent to them last week of november i got a call and my application was approved and the guy said i'd like to meet you i'd like to know you you really love you that's why i did not love you i don't even know the new chairman he said i'm saying that because there were six people that made application and you were the last to submit but when the chairman came, the chairman only approved your own. And after he approved your own, he said that the, the policy will not stand again. Like, what? I said, OK, that I'll come. Because I needed to sign some documents. So I went to the head office the following day. And almost everybody, almost everybody in the department, they were just standing to see who I was. They asked questions. I said I did not love you. I, you know, I, I was able to convince them. They said, you must, you, you must have a very, your God is big. I said, yes, I have a big God. On 2nd of December, 2015, in my sitting room, watching television, I got an alert in my phone. And when I opened my phone, I saw an alert of 5 million naira. I fell down. I rolled in my sitting room. I needed 4 million. And that's how we got to the US. I did the surgery and we came back. When we have peace, when we focus our attention on God, we give him the opportunity, we give him the chance to do the impossible. Time will not permit, and like I said, I have a lot of experience, but I like to just leave these ones with you. I like to end by saying sometimes the Lord rides out the storms with us, and other times He calms the restless sea around us. Most of all, He calms the storm inside us in our deepest inner soul. This is by Lord John Ogilvie. He said, In the midst of life storms, we can be in perfect peace. It is possible. Look at the bird. There are storms all around, and yet the bird is calm. So it is possible to be in the midst of life storms and still be peaceful. Thank you. <clears throat> I hope I, you know, I hope this has blessed someone's heart. At this time, I'd like to welcome questions or Experiences that validate what I have taught. 
and then we sing the song when you know we sing the first song that we took and then we pray i want to stop sharing so that i can see everybody's face thank you thank you for your time thank you for listening god bless you all in jesus name Ladies and gentlemen, uh, the lady who just spoke to us is uh, a child of God, a mother of a beautiful, uh, beautiful girl that is exactly like her. She is married uh, to uh, Mr. Mike Iwat. So that was Mrs. Akaniene, Mike Iwat. She is a chartered accountant and uh, a chartered tax practitioner by profession, a fellow of uh, both the Chartered Institute of Taxation, Nigeria, and the uh, Institute of Chartered Accountants in Nigeria. Uh, she's an accounting graduate from the University of Uyo and a postgraduate of uh, University of Liverpool and University of Salford, Manchester. Uh, she's doing business administration and uh, operations management. She's a graduate of the Institute of National Transformation in Nigeria. Uh, she's uh, a John Maxwell certified DISC trainer and coach. She's a member of the Association of Project Management, a member of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of England and Wales. She is also a graduate of the Institute of National Transformation, uh, Nigeria, especially uh, with executive leadership. Akadiyane has passion for business consultancy, governance, leadership, and personal development. She is a mentor and a coach. In fact, her special interest is in the areas of uh, uh, personal development and uh, coaching. You know, uh, this is somebody who is uh, well uh, vested in the area of uh, her discourse. And I want to believe that uh, we'll continue to have her on this project. Thank you so much. And thank you everybody for being a part of uh, uh, this webinar, uh, Intentional Integrated Leadership. Until we meet again, bye-bye for now.